it or I'll keep one. My name's Matt, welcome back to the shop. And today, <laughs> today we're talking about the uh, reply to the comments from the Evan Rood. Now people started saying stuff like, oh you can't compare this, you can't compare that, blah blah blah. Yeah you can. Well, no you can. Fuck off. No you can. What the fuck am I saying? You can compare whatever engine you want. It's my channel. I can compare a fucking Bugatti Veyron with a head strimmer. It's up to me. It, you know, and the fact of the matter is as long as you use the same units, of course you can compare any engine to whatever the fuck you want to compare it to. Was it a fair comparison? Eh, no, of course it wasn't. That wasn't the point. People missed the point what I said right at the beginning of the video. Night video, turbo video, a lot of basically two-stroke videos. When I talk about two-stroke videos, everyone gets the knickers in a twist. They start crying about it and so on and so forth. And one of the repeating comments that was happening all and all, all, all the time basically was uh, the Evin Rood has, you know, it's a two-stroke, it's a V6, it has 300 horsepower. And unfortunately, I'm going to tell you now that that is a shit engine because that's a shit number. So the point I made right at the beginning of the video was this was a reply to people's comments. I was talking about two-stroke engines versus four-stroke. I've done a four V, four-stroke engines. And that's what I was talking about. In so many videos, I was talking about why two-strokes are shite. Why two-strokes are shite was saying Two strokes have issues, this is why, in a really small, slightly comical, you know, I also did why four strokes were shite, why wankles are shite, people get the knickers in a twist, I think it's fucking hilarious. Any road, people said, power to weight ratio doesn't matter, are you fucking nuts? Of course it matters. James Watt, the guy who basically calculated what horsepower is in the first place, it was a cock measuring contest between all the guys who made steam engines engines were this small this big this small and because loads of people had different variants dual acting pistons and condenser compressors and fucking you know recovery systems and double bleeding and god all these fucking different types they couldn't just they couldn't work out which engine was more efficient which engine oh that's a good idea let's invest in that one that's a good idea that's going to be the future because there were so many different ways you could make a steam engine no one could really understand what which way it was so James Watt came out with the idea of how to actually calculate in an imperial measurement which is what horsepower is um, how much horsepower each engine used to produce and then he did the weight of it because it did matter you can have a massive engine that creates massive horsepower numbers but this smaller engine you know, lower numbers, but per its weight, per its, you know, its literage or whatever, you know, for, for its internal volume, you can compare it in loads of different ways and loads of different, you know, um, BMEP, you can, you, you can work it out, you know, by pressure and stuff like that. You, there's loads of different ways you can work out all these engines and you can, as long as you compare them like for like with weight and all the rest of it, you can do what you want. The fact of the matter is, is comparing an outboard two-stroke motor that's a V6 to a, a, a yeah to a, an R1 is a ridiculous thing to do. That's my whole point. It was kind of just a shove in their face. I was talking about two-stroke motorcycles versus four-stroke motorcycles and saying the pros and cons of each. When you go to bigger CCs, four-stroke is the way to go. Two strokes, meh, it's all thermally horrible and all the rest of it. And then people were like, oh fucking hell, there's a 3.4 litre, or there's a fucking V6 thingy that makes 300 horsepower, you're talking shite. That's an outboard motor. Alright, you want to go there? Let's fucking go there. For its weight, that engine is fucking shot. It, you know, it's shit, that's what I said. And then people started saying, which is fair enough, you know, they say, oh the weight you were using wasn't just the fucking engine, it was this, it was this, it was this. It was the prop, it was the drive shaft, it was all the rest of it. The R1 was the water cooling system, the radiator, all the piping, the water in it. It was also its entire six speed transmission. You know, if we wanted we could chuck in the weight of the chain and the sprockets, which is probably another two kilos, which won't bring them numbers down that much. Yes, there's a few more you could say, well, you have to add the shocks and the steering to the R1 because the boat's got its steering and its clamps, but boat bikes don't use clamps or whatever. You could say quite a lot of things. Pop the propeller off, you know what I mean? 
uh, it's like popping the rear wheel of a, of a motorbike off kind of thing or you know blah 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 the fact of the matter is is the numbers weren't that brilliant you know what I mean that was the whole point in it in a quick way just saying just saying to these guys you've got a three lead, you've got a, a v6 two stroke that makes 300 horsepower fucking 300 horsepower for 3.4 litres is not good that's not something you want to be bragging about you know what I mean it, it, it's it, and rightly so that's not what the Evin Rood engine is all about now there are a few things you know that isn't uh, let me just be clear that isn't what the engine is about it's not about pure horsepower it's about producing quite a bit of torque although the torque numbers the torque numbers for the Evin Rood v, uh, V6 when you actually look at the bike and you scale one up to the other and all the rest of it they're about the same so it wasn't really a high torque engine either for its for its size does the Evin Rood kick the shit out of the four strokes that are also in that class like Yamaha's four stroke yes of course it does but again you're comparing two stroke to four stroke and I did my MotoGP cheating video which is talking about exactly that you cannot compare a two stroke to a four stroke that are the same CC and I'm going to do a video on that as a completely different subject but you know it does its purpose you can't compare the bike to this blah 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 you can compare the engines it doesn't matter what the really to a point you, well, you, the numbers are there you can compare the engines what you stick them in you know is a totally different thing and what it was designed to do the fact of the matter is, is the Evan Rood is actually down on power it's actually detuned quite a lot you could get an awful lot more power out of that engine it's detuned and it's detuned one they haven't got stupidly high compression ratios because two it has direct injection in the actual cylinder proper direct injection that's why it can kind of pass the emissions and all the rest of it um, but I did look up some stuff and I forgot to bring it with me but I'll, I'll try and do it on the top of my head there's some interesting things that people said that said that the Evin Rood is meant to be on full throttle all the time. No, that's what people do. If you actually look at the manual, it actually says that at 100% at full throttle, it would expect the duty cycle to be about 6% of your time. So the engine should be at 100% throttle about 6% of its life, where it said it should be at idle. I'm sure it said something like 40%. 40% of that engine's running is about idling and it does go on to state that if you run um, above these numbers that your spark plug life is going to seriously decrease you know the engine is down tuned as well like I say it, it, the, the Evan Rood engine is more about bragging about the fact that they've got a two stroke past the um, past the emissions laws that's you know the biggest thing one of the other things is uh, the sound regulations there's also that that's why they don't use such high compression ratios um, one of the other things about the Evan Rood full stop is that you know the weight of the Yamaha engine was with the coolant and the coolant system the Evan Rood you know doesn't require a cooling system it pulls it out of the lake or the river that it's actually in so basically you don't have to carry around your own coolant you know which is all added weight and stuff like that the other thing is as well is these engines are really quite cold um, that's why you can manage it you do not want to try and stick that engine in a motorbike or even a car or something like that because it will just overheat there's some guy who's talking to me at the moment who wants to make a hill climbing car um, and again he's facing massive cooling problem issues because the engine um, you know is only designed it is designed to have massive amounts of cooling you know trying to get that heat away from a small contained V6 you know it's all in a fucking box and it's all closed away and all the rest of it is a difficult thing to do and they can kind of run even the powers they are getting because of the really good adequate cooling they have is it a shitty comparison yes of course it is and in a sense that was the point I was trying to make is that it, the engine itself isn't power to weight isn't really that good at all it's shite you know it has a different purpose I totally agree with you guys um, but then the weirdest thing is other guys were trying to claw it back saying stuff like the Evin Rood can run all day at full throttle you might be doing that it ain't going to last long doing that by the sounds of it this is from Evin Rood themselves you know what I mean they talk about the marine duty cycle and all the rest of it and how much the engine should be run there's some guys who did some tests they did throughout the entire they did two days I think they did, they did the test of this engine and they run it for two hours out of the entire two days I think it was 12 hours each day 
they run it for two hours over uh, 100% throttle and that's all they did. The other thing that was quite interesting as well is there's a couple of graphs and all that I said. I'll see if I can put them on the screen but I'll do it here just in case I can't find them. It was something else flicking through. And um, you know your uh, best fuel economy was actually not at the um, at full throttle. Your best fuel economy, I think it was like 60 to 70 percent. That was the best of fuel economy you could get out of this thing because that's when it produced peak torque. Um, so you know most guys, you don't want to run it full throttle. The other thing is they said, you know, you know, you you can run it for full throttle for fucking thousands of hours. Do why can't you run a motorbike like that? Of course you can. If everything's all good, if the oil temperature's kept the same and all the rest of it, and the coolant's working the same, you've got adequate coolant, the bike can just sit there and run all fucking day at full throttle. I don't understand why people thought that was difficult to do. You know what I mean? It's like, if the engine's happy running at full throttle for five minutes, as long as there's no heat gains, you can sit there for five fucking five hours. You know what I mean? It's not made out of some... This stupid engine isn't made out of some awesome materials that the fucking motorbike isn't it was just like yeah anyway you know and uh, one other argument you know i was talking about motorbikes talking about motorbikes yamaha make outboards and so the suzuki and probably honda and everyone else uh, no honda do and all the rest of it um the the, the yamaha has switched straight onto the four stroke and they switched over the four stroke because they can see what's coming this isn't going to pass the new upcoming regulations and then the regulations after that, it's only going to get worse, and it's going to get worse for everyone. Yamaha have seen the light, just like they have done with the bike, just like a lot of them have seen the light with the motocross bikes and all the rest of it. They can see what's coming, and they're fucking opted out a two-stroke. It is just, you know, it is just a dead end. You know, investing in, investing in two-strokes is just, there's a few people doing it. You know, BRP are doing it because they've got a lot of patents and a lot of money in it. If they can string it out until it dies, then that's what they're going to do. You know what I mean? They also make a lot of money, not just on the engines, but everything else that they manufacture. Hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.